The 2020 Democrats are thinking of brave new ways to buy votes for this upcoming election because apparently they've finally begun to understand that just comparing Trump to Hitler is only going to excite the people who are already delusional enough to vote for them in the first place. And so now they've decided to preach climate alarmism to the American people, claiming that this battle is just as hard as World War II, if not harder. And if we don't fix it, we're all going to get cancer and die. And by the way, we've got about a little over a year to start fixing it or else it's going to be too late. That's right. Just in time for the election. Coincidentally, I'm sure. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, commie. Climate change, now referred to as the climate crisis, because I guess the focus groups arrived at the conclusion that a crisis is a bit more compelling than a change, but it's a very complex issue. Mountains of data, analysis, different trends, all sorts of stuff. And because of that, we're not going to get too deep into the core of the climate change issue in this video, but rather we're going to address the climate alarmism that's being used to manipulate your emotions and indoctrinate your children. And Coincidentally, this talk about the world coming to an end is right in time for the upcoming election, which is a pretty good strategy, and I definitely would have liked to have been in, in the room for that meeting just to fly on the wall because it's like, hey, you know, we need black people to vote for us, so, you know, why not just offer them slavery reparations if we win? They're like, oh, yeah, good idea, and then one guy's just like, hey, we need people votes, so why not just say that the world's going to end unless you vote for our guys so that they can stop it? It's like, brilliant. And I remember we had 12 years. AOC even said so. She's like, we have like 12 years before the world ends. You know, that was the number. Then Prince Charles comes out and he's like, actually, I firmly believe that the next 18 months will decide our ability to keep climate change at sustainable levels. Leftist media interprets this as, oh my God, we only have 18 months before the world's going to end. And this is what happens. You have a young generation of people just so obsessed with science. They're like, oh yeah, man, science. Look at, look at my NASA t-shirt. Yeah, I love science, women in STEM. And then some leftist writes an op-ed that says the world's gonna end in 18 months. They're like, oh no, I must tweet. And then it's like, hey, you know, that's not true. They're like, how dare you? How dare you deny science? Without science, you would not be. It's like questioning science, which by the way, is a very important aspect of science. It's like similar to blasphemy for these people. They just worship science. And the reason for that is they believe that science has all the answers and that provides them with a sense of security and control in their lives. But the problem is that science is very often wrong. And I'm not anti-science, by the way, I'm just pro-truth and things aren't true because science says so. They're true because they're true. And sometimes science helps us discover that, sure but oftentimes it doesn't. And so having an unfailing allegiance to science uh, is often conflated with, you know, I have an unfailing allegiance to truth, but they're not the same thing at all, not even remotely close. And so now we've got people coming out, particularly within the Democrat party, saying that because of this climate crisis, we're going to experience unprecedented consequences. It's going to be catastrophic. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to elect us because only we know how to solve it. And it's like, okay, how do we solve it? Well, we're gonna have to subsidize abortions for population control. We're gonna have to assume more control over the economy. And it's like, wait a second. <laughs> Did you see the sleight of hand? Because they were already advocating for more control over the economy, more abortion access, even subsidizing with taxpayer dollars, all of this stuff. They were seeing them propose to combat climate crisis, the, the climate crisis rather. They've been advocating for these policies for decades. So really what they're doing is using this totally manufactured climate crisis, which we'll talk more about in a second. They're using it as a Trojan horse to implement policies that they've been in favor of long before the climate crisis or even climate change was a household term. And stuff even predates the term global warming. And so it's like, okay, to combat climate change, we're actually going to have to control the auto industry. Oh, okay, there goes 3.5% of our GDP. No problem there. Oh, we're also going to have to eliminate air travel. There goes over 5% of our GDP. Okay, no issues there. Oh, also bear in mind that when they get into office, by indoctrinating the country into believing that the East Coast is going to be underwater before the next leap year, they're going to take control of healthcare. That's about 17% of the economy. So what's that? That's like 25%, about a quarter of the economy at the very least. Very epic. <laughs> and then on top of that, you've got the Green New Deal, which they've all come out in support of. And in 20 years, that's going to kill 1.4 million jobs. It's going to rob $40,000 in income from the typical family of four. It's going to increase the household electricity cost by 12 to 14% and kill our GDP by about $4 trillion. Again, very epic. You know, it's getting to a point where it's like people ask me, like I went to get a coffee the other morning and the guy's like, hey man, you seem tense, you know, it was a rough morning. And in my mind, I'm just like seeing still images of headlines, like national support for transgenders at an all time high. We're going to enforce a buyback of semi-automatic weapons and cars. Illegal alien released in sanctuary city despite ICE detainer goes on to rape woman. FBI investigating two malfunctioning cameras outside of Jeffrey Epstein's cell. And it's like, you don't know what I know, man. It's like, you don't want to know the truth. Oh, you can't handle the truth. If you only knew, if you only knew how bad things really are. 
The United States could cut carbon emissions by 100%. It would not make a discernible difference on global warming. Complete elimination of US emissions would inhibit warming by less than 0.2 degrees by the end of the century. That's by 2100. And it would reduce the rise of sea levels by less than two centimeters. So the real question is, is it worth crippling our families in our country while other countries continue to flourish? Is it really worth it? Just so we can pat ourselves on the back while we're biking 25 miles to work in the rain? Like, well, at least we're doing the right thing. And you, know, you get to look at the ocean while you're biking because the sea levels rose anyways, because that's what they do on this planet from time to time. Plus, the other countries didn't slow their usage of greenhouse gases anyways. So here's the problem. Other than the fact that all of their solutions to combat this climate crisis are stupid and ineffective, they fail to distinguish between us not agreeing that there is a problem and us not agreeing with their solution to the problem. They say, climate change is a national emergency and we need to ban cars. And we're like, eh, I don't know about that one, big guy. And they're like, oh. I get it. You're a science denier. You're a stupid anti-science bitch, and I hate you. It's like, in other words, they assume that because we don't agree on their solution to the problem, we must not even recognize that there is a problem in the first place. And this is partially true. And the reason for that is that they're misrepresenting the actual scientific analysis pertaining to climate change. And they're just using this to Trojan horse their agenda, the same way that they capitalize on the emotional trauma caused by mass shootings to push for their anti-gun agenda. Now they don't have any emotional turmoil to capitalize on, so what do they do? They create it. They create this climate alarmism that we're seeing now, lest we forget that in 1989, senior UN environmental officials claimed that entire countries would be wiped off the face of the planet if we did not reverse the course of global warming by 2000. Only 90s kids remember the term global warming. Lest we forget that the same UN official claimed that the most conservative scientific estimate is that the Earth's temperature will rise one to seven degrees in the next 30 years. But looking at data from NASA, between 1989 and 2019, we're only at about half a degree. Lest we forget Al Gore said in 2006 that we only had 10 years left to reverse the course before the world reached a point of no return. He said this in An Inconvenient Truth, a movie that I was forced to watch in public school, a movie that also contained scenes of Manhattan and Florida completely underwater, none of which happened. But remember, teaching this to your kids in school, indoctrinating them at a young age, it's explicitly part of the strategy and it's happening every day. And you can keep going on and on through these things, these doomsday predictions. All of them claim to be undeniably true, and yet here we are quite safe and quite sound. I mean, we're still in an ice age, technically speaking, because the poles are covered with ice. You've got four and a half billion years of Earth, periods during which it was exponentially hotter than now, periods during which it was exponentially colder than now. There's been more CO2, there's been less CO2. It's been around the block a few times. You've got the Milankovitch cycles, and you know, even if you buy that CO2 emissions caused by humans are causing the climate change, you're not exactly correct because they're not causing it. More accurately, they're just speeding up what's been happening naturally for literally billions of years to no great effect. We're not that significant. But here's something interesting from the Monthly Weather Review which is a peer-reviewed scientific journal, uh, and it says, the Arctic Ocean is warming up. The seals are finding the water in some places to be too hot, according to a report by the Commerce Department. Reports claim that temperatures in the Arctic zone are reaching previously unheard of levels. Scarcely any ice has been found as far north as 81 degrees, 29 minutes. Very alarming stuff. Oh, I neglected to inform you of the year in which that was published. Right, because it was 1922. Yeah, that's almost 100 years ago. I think they missed the mark a little bit there in their analysis. And when they say hurricanes are more dangerous because of climate change, they're measuring danger by the dollar value of the damage, which is going to increase as we keep building nicer things. So that's misleading. And also, climate change isn't causing more hurricanes. They like to cherry pick data from the last 30 years or so. But if you look at the longer trends, hurricane activity has actually decreased even as levels of carbon dioxide have increased. And so. You've got some people, such as George Mason University economist uh, Walter E. Williams, that argue that the reason that there are so many apocalyptic predictions is because they have an agenda for more government control. They're using fear about the environment as a way to expand government control, which kind of makes sense because they use fear of mass shootings to chip away at gun rights. They use fear of everyone to the right of Don Lemon being a white nationalist to chip away at free speech rights. So it's like, I don't know, man, you know, it kind of adds up a little bit. It's par for the course. Williams makes the argument that communism and socialism have lost respectability, so they've been repackaged as environmentalism, like watermelons, green on the outside, red on the inside. And at first, this sounds crazy, but then you start to ask yourself, why does the Green New Deal guarantee that those who are simply unwilling to work will be supported by the public? What exactly does that have to do with the environment? All right, hang on. Let's just look at the 2014 IPCC synthesis report on climate change to see what they're saying our policymakers ought to do. 
Oh, what do we have? Oh, okay. Improved access to education, nutrition, health facilities, energy, safe housing, and settlement structures, and social support structures. And in government talk, improved access means we're going to use taxpayer money to subsidize it. Remember that. Uh, reduced gender inequality and marginalization in other forms. What does that have to do with climate change? I'm asked, like, maybe I'm stupid, so I'm truly asking. Maybe I'm too anti-science to understand why climate change can be solved by capitulating to feminist demands for equality that they've had for generations in this country. Is it because they emit less carbon dioxide from their mouths because they wouldn't be bitching about the non-existent patriarchy oppressing them as much. That one's going to get me in trouble. But seriously, you keep reading through these and you're like, okay, uh, you get improved access to and control of local resources, land tenure, disaster, risk reduction, social safety nets, and social protection. What does that sound like to you? Those are just the first two categories. Most of it has nothing to do with climate change. There's also stuff in here about allocating money to educate the public on the issue, which means basically a propaganda campaign. I mean, the machine feeds itself. Because the more people who believe in this, you know, the more power they get, the more money they take from the taxpayers, the more they can spend on manufacturing belief amongst the populace. And the cycle continues. This is quite literally the oldest trick in the book. They're actually lulling the country into accepting radically left positions on things that have nothing to do with the environment by spreading lies about what's going to happen if they don't get into office and start to solve this crisis. You guys are actually such sheep. You're not, you're not sheep, you're like, uh, you're chicken little, like, ah, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sea levels are rising, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says we have 18 months left to live. It's like, easy there, just take a breath, how do you know that? And they're like, well, no, I don't really know that, but our politicians told me so, and then it has to be true, because I'm a young liberal, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez taught me how to make macaroni and cheese on Instagram Live, and if you can't trust her, well, who the hell can you trust? Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel right now because we're about to break 100,000. That's very exciting, very epic gamers, and uh, you know, I'm bringing the suits back, I think, for 100,000. Because people are like, why don't you wear suits anymore? And it was like, it's hot, you know? It started to get really hot, so I think maybe we'll do the summer, we'll do the, uh, the button-down cotton pattern shirts. Those are pretty epic, and then we'll do suits the rest of the time because you gotta look the part, you know? 100,000, gotta look the part. So thank you so much for watching, as always, and may God bless America.